Right, welcome to the second part of this video looking at radio controlling the Bruder 5115M John Deere tractor and in this part what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sorting out how we're going to attach these wheels to an axle and installing the small Tamiya 3 speed gearbox. Now the gearbox does come in the vehicle chassis kit and you can see it here. You can make it in a number of configurations. For this I think that I'm going to be putting it at its lower speed because with these larger tyres I think that that's probably going to be going to be better. So with the transmission as I said you want the higher speed, which is what they refer to in the instructions, as being the normal speed. And really there are two reasons for this. First of all, because it means that the axle that you're driving with is going to come out of the far end, which will line up better. And secondly, I think it'll go to more of a scale speed. So, following this first part of the instructions, rather than the second part here which is for high speed and it was high speed which I used in the Land Rover and you can see how the shaft came out in the middle which again for this model that was what I wanted. What you need to do is with the Dremel you need to shave out a load of this area here. Now the Dremel stone that I used has got a small dimple in the end of it and that seems to be the best one for this kind of work and you just work all the way around grinding it out until you virtually through these bits here if you do go through I don't think it's the end of the world but I basically kept going until I could see from the inside that I was basically through those and in order to know if you've got to the right place or not take one of the plain axles as opposed to the hex axle from the gearbox set and when you can post it through the hole here through the gearbox and out the other side you know that you've got it right now I can see that I need to do a tiny bit more because I previously made it work without the two bushings in there so I just need to grind out just a little bit more. I'll just put the bushing back. The bushing is very easy to lose, but you aren't going to get good gear mesh if you don't use them. So it seems that you probably have to keep going until you've, you've actually got these two areas here. hollow. I'll just take this out because it's a bit messy. Make them about the same. Okay, let's give that a quick test. There we have it. Perfect fit. It's not tight. It can move around a little bit but you'll notice that the motor hardly moves at all and when a motor is attached I'll just push that in there it actually sits even a little bit tighter here we have the fully assembled gearbox with the grub screw on the, on the last gear not actually done up but pushed over to one side We, we push that through there and then we can, without bending anything, push the whole thing across until it's even. If anything needs moving afterwards to free it up, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
just make sure that we've got the same amount each side. So here we've got 25 and a half mil, so about an inch. The other side, just under 25 mil, so we'll just move it across slightly. 25 mil, 25 mil. That's about right. And what I'll do for the time being, if I move the gearbox around, I should be able to. That's it. Get onto the grub screw. Otherwise, this gearbox would be completely unserviceable. That's that. And we have the gearbox mounted. The shaft here is clearly much smaller than the hole that we're wanting to go into. So this is the point at which we return to these nuts which I've put on. So you can see here how one of them I've drilled it out and I've tapped it. I'll just quickly do the other one. So that was a two and a half millimetre draw bit and an M3 metric tap. Okay, I'll just pop that on here and it seems to have made a thread already now. Actually, I'll just file that off because it's a bit sharp. And just screw it up until it's flush. Perfect. Now, the next bit is I'm going to insert a piece of aluminium tubing which says that it's 5 30 seconds by 0.14 in brackets 3.97 millimeters. And this is from Precision Metals in Chicago, Illinois. And that's the code number 110. Now this is a pretty tight fit in there and oh, what I want to do is I want to slice this off because it's actually a reasonable fit over here, slightly loose but I'll come to that in a minute. Two and a half centimetres ought to give me a very tight push fit but not so tight I'm going to damage anything so normally normally I would cut this with a knife actually I think I will I'll, I'll just cut it with a knife so using my marker pen mark out 25 and 50 And then if I just roll the knife over it, it, it cuts it very, very easily. You don't need to apply a great deal of pressure. That's that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those in and I want them to go in quite firmly, that end seems a bit sharp, I'll put that at the other end. That pushes in nicely and if I really needed to, I'm sure I could get it out. And then the other one,
that's got in slightly tighter but that ought to be fine I need to make sure that the ends of these aren't closed up because of the next stage I'm going to do so I'm just going around it with a knife just to take off anything that might have been caused by me cutting it if I push these on they're actually a much better fit than they were before but I would I would still like to get them slightly tighter than that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap some tin foil about one half layers around this now this tin foil that I've got here I've had this for many years and I actually bought it for protecting plastic radio control helicopter body shells from the from the heat of the motors I'm sure you could you could um, just as easily use normal kitchen foil and this step is perhaps not completely necessary but it's something I wanted to do so if I take this the handy thing about the tin foil is that you can actually stick it on so I want to go around about one and a half times that's once that's a half I don't want more than that because otherwise it won't fit. That's one. Let's get it on there nice and tight. And the same on the other side. Yep, they slide on, but it's for it's like a it's um, like a perfect interference fit. both of them go on quite nicely now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill through through where I've already got the holes and I'm going to tap it so that I can have grub screws going right onto the hex pushing this down so that it's out of the way going to follow these through with the tap particularly because I want the thread going in there And then making sure that that having tapped all the way through it's completely clean using one of the spare axles from the gearbox kit and then putting four grub screws in let's just give it a quick go One, two, there you have it. hopefully those will turn fairly true and if they don't you can get everything apart to adjust it and that should be all right I'll put a cable tie in here to hold this down like it's in the Jeep I can see that 
this part here won't simply fit straight over. I'm going to have to do some trimming here. So before I finish this bit of video, I think that I'm going to want to trim the parts up here so that it all fits on there. I know that these tabs here are getting in the way, so I'll take those off. And I'll just pop a motor in so that we know we're working the right size. The next thing is I know that this steering wheel is going to get in the way and I'm possibly going to need to glue it in at some point. But it doesn't easily come out, it doesn't need to, but it does need to be out of the way. So I'll just give that a quick chop for now. Those two locate in the front, and the two should locate in the back, they're not. You can see why. It seems to be this part of the gearbox which holds the motor in is pushing against the area here. And so I'm going to have to trim some of that out. Yep, and we have a perfect fit. Unfortunately, it means that there is a small hole here. If you can see it, just in there. But that seems like a fair compromise to me. The next thing to do is to trim this piece. And given what I know about that piece, that's going to give me a lot of clues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove basically the whole inside area. Quite a soft plastic, this black one. Not much good for gluing anything to, I wouldn't think, but nice and easy for cutting. Right, let's that these out. Just trim these off. Right, let's see if that goes over the motor. That goes over it perfectly. And we've already tested this piece to make sure that it goes over. Like so. The whole of the back end is done and that's looking quite good. So in the next part of the video we're going to be concentrating on sorting out some steam for the front and some electronics.